Hi there, good morning. Welcome to Sunnyside Journals. And uh, you're gonna work along with me today if you're gonna join me, I hope you do. I am going to tea dye paper and I'm going to do it the funny way that I discovered by accident um, that will produce little bubbles in the on your paper when you're finished tea dyeing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of you have asked how I do it, and I figured it out by accident uh, one time because I um, my hands were so dried out from glue and tea and winter, and they were literally sore. Uh, the dry skin was just cracking, and uh, anyhow, and I didn't want to touch the paper, and I just thought. And I was too lazy to go get gloves. I've always got gloves. I'm a hairdresser. We always have gloves. <laughs> We're like healthcare workers in a way for your hair. <laughs> Anyhow, um, so because I tea dye in my kitchen, on my kitchen counter, I was able to just uh, open my drawer right here and I pulled out a couple of spoons. And I used the spoons to literally pat down my paper and pour tea on top so that I could just save my fingers from a little more time in the tea bath because tea will dry your skin out. The, the acids, the tannic acids in it will dry your skin out. If you hear this, I don't know if you can hear that. Um, my kitchen has a creaky floor. So, um, and, and it just is what it is. Try your best to ignore it. Anyhow, um, so let me... Let me find, oh, here's a good one. Here's a good example. So I discovered by being lazy, let me get this into focus. Do you see right here the little bubbles that show up? What I do, there's, there's some bubbles, there's some bubbles. Uh, what I do, the technique I use, oh, there's some good bubbles. So you can see they're just little air bubbles, but the tea stains around them. This one I did this weekend and it's got lots of tiny little bubbles and I'm not sure why and I'm wondering if it's the paper. I never know what I'm going to get. See all those little bubbles in there? I love it. Um, I never know what I'm going to get because I really never know what kind of paper I'm using because I, I get my paper at thrift stores and I just watch for bundles of paper and I just buy it up uh, really, really inexpensively. So I mean, I can get a good feel for, you know, probably the weight or the quality. But to me, it doesn't matter. I don't mind a thin paper. They have their place in a junk journal. They don't bulk up your journal. So those are good for writing pages, for handwriting. And the thicker paper, of course, is good. You know, the user can collage on the thicker paper or glue photos on. And the thicker paper can withstand that better. But the thinner paper... It does have its place in a junk journal, so I'm not choosy, and I like both. So I've got my paper today. I'm going to just be um, tea dyeing just some regular size paper, 8.5 by 11, where I live here in Canada. That's just a standard piece of paper. This is my favorite little crummy looking pan that I got from the dollar store that I like to use for this paper. And uh, everyone has their own routine that works for them. And for me, I find that I do better doing maybe one or two small batches every day. It's not overwhelming to me. I can still do other things in my day that I enjoy because tea dyeing isn't necessarily something that I find terribly satisfying because it's monotonous. So I just find that if I have tea left over in my teapot from this morning... Um, I can do a quick, even even 10 sheets of paper, you know, think about it, if it's folded, that gives you one, two, three, four pages in a book. So that's 40 pages. If you can do 10, tea dye, 10 sheets of paper, you've got 40 pages to go into a junk journal. That's amazing. That's a lot of work done. So I, for me, I know that my clothing rack, my collapsible clothing rack, will hold 20 sheets. So that's usually my goal, is to at least do one batch of um, 20 sheets of paper. Um, but sometimes, if it's a Monday morning, I will make up a whole jug of tea 
And I will just save that tea for the week and just make a few batches every morning. Um, because what I do is, it, for me, it's methodical. I'll do one stage. I'll go do something. I'll come back downstairs later. Maybe I, maybe I want a cup of tea, you know, break in my morning cup of tea. Uh, then I'll do the next step in what I'm doing. So, um, it's just, this is my routine. Everyone's got a different routine. This routine will change on hot summer days, uh, because I will just go right outside and work out in the fresh air and things seem to work faster out in the fresh air. So, um, there's no right or wrong way. You know, there are people who are firm believers in bake them in the oven. There are firm believers in dry them out on a big table. There are other, you know, that lay it out on their grass and then, you know, they get their exercise later in the day <laughs> gathering up their papers. I've done that. <laughs> Uh, there's no right or wrong whatever works for you and you know what it, it still gives you a nice um unique tea dyed paper and now or coffee dyed if you prefer coffee dyed personally i'm of two schools i like the color of coffee dyed paper better than the color of tea dyed paper i like the warm brown of coffee dyed as opposed to the slightly orange uh, tinge that tea dyed can have. Um, but my problem with coffee dyed paper is I don't like the smell of it after it's dry. It really, it bothers me. And a lot of people don't mind it. I love the smell of fresh coffee and I love coffee, but coffee dyed paper later on when I'm trying to use it, I don't like the smell of it. Uh, if I'm patient and I wait a few months, that smell dissipates. So, you know, if I were patient. <laughs> Anyhow, so let's get started. So that's my little pan. Got it at the dollar store. This is my jug I like to use. It's just a Pyrex uh, eight cup or four cup jug that I like to use when I make, uh, when I'm prepping to make a jug of tea. You say I'm not using just a leftover cup that was in my teapot. So if I'm actually going to make a jug of tea, and I'm determined I'm going to make several batches of paper. I just love using this one. And then I use the cheapest tea <laughs> I can find. This is not tea that I drink. Um, this is just from my no-name store. I, I think it's about two or three dollars a bag for a hundred tea bags. So, uh, and what I do is, for every cup of water, I add one tea bag. So. Um, pardon me, I had two tea bags for every cup of water. <laughs> um, so this is a four cup jug. I will add eight tea bags and I just leave them all together. So two, four, six, eight. And then this will go back in. I have a shelf in my pantry that's purely uh, my papers and my tea dyeing equipment. <laughs> uh, so now here's another thing I do is I just use the hottest water out of my tap. I don't bother boiling the kettle. So I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go uh, fill this up with hot water. So hold on. Okay, so it's kind of foamy because I just blasted the hot water into it. it. Makes it a little bit foamy. That calms down. Um, so yeah, I just use just the hottest water out of my tap and uh, that works fine. Um, hold on, let me tilt it a little so you can see. So there, jug of, oops, oh jeepers, I'm going to have another crashing camera day. I shouldn't have done that. Ah, there we go. Now here's another step I do. Um, there seems to be several, well, two schools of thought, no, three schools of thought <laughs> for uh, this next step. Uh, there are some people that say uh, tea, of course, is an acid and dyeing it, dipping your papers in an acid uh, will, um, your papers won't last as long. Uh, so they say to put some baking soda into the bath, into your tea bath and your coffee bath. Uh, there are others who say, I've never done it. My, tea, my papers are fine. I don't intend for my journals to last 200 years. Um, and then there are others who throw it in when they can remember. <laughs> 
don't know whether it works or not. They say that baking soda neutralizes the acid. So um, I don't know whether it works or not. But hey, I got baking soda in the cupboard. I just, I, I, I should have shown you how much. I put a little bit in there. I don't know, maybe half a teaspoon, a teaspoon. Again, that's another school of thought. You know, school of thought, opinion thing. You know, how much baking soda do you put in? Well, you know what? I throw some in, and if it helps, yeehaw. And if it doesn't, um, I don't know. I just, I just do. So now I let this steep for a while. Not too long. This is when I would probably go upstairs, have my shower, you know, wash my face, brush my teeth, and then I would come back down and... Um, and get started. Uh, plus, I don't like working with it boiling hot. And right now, like that's we have our we have our hot water tank set too high, and we keep meaning to lower the temperature. It's much. It's dangerously high. So that's why <laughs> that's why I don't mind doing it this way. Um, so that's too hot for me to work with right now. So I'm going to pause again, and then we'll get back to it, and then I'll actually show you uh, what I do to make uh, the bubbled, the bubble patterns in the tea. And um, I'm just going to show you my basic method and how I get it ready. But then I'm just going to tell you uh, what I do when I'm done, like when it's all had its bath and it's ready to dry. I'm just going to explain that because I don't know how to edit two clips together of film footage um, and you know what, you can dry your papers the way you want, right? So you just want to see how I make the bubbles. So I'm not going to uh, worry about that. So I'm going to pause for now. I'm going to let this steep a bit. I'm going to go get some things done. And uh, it will seem like this to you, uh, but it'll probably be about an hour for me. So uh, I'll be back in a flash. Okay, so um, let's get started. Here's my crummy little pan that I like to use. Um, and something I like to do is because um, I never quite know with my papers um, whether they're, you know, you know how you can buy just copy paper that you just use. It's, it's less expensive and therefore it's less, you know, the quality can, can vary. So, and wet paper will stretch and misshapen, and it will also tear if it's sopping wet. So, one thing that I've learned is I put a layer of um, paper towel into the bottom of the pan first. And you'll see why later. It, I'll try and explain now real quickly. Once your paper is in on top, and imagine everything's soaking wet, if this paper towel wasn't here, you'd be trying to get the corners of these papers up so that you can grab your bundle of wet paper and you can literally tear, rip, and shred those corners. Whereas because of the paper towel, I can grab the paper towel and I can lift up my bundle of papers. You'll see. When, I, when it comes time to do that, you'll see. So I just basically put that in there. And with, with the tea bags... Oh, here's another important thing. Roll up your sleeves or else you'll be like me and you'll have many, many long sleeve shirts that are orange right here. <laughs> because of course the tea, um, it will dye your sleeves. So I just squeeze out the rest of the tea. Sometimes I empty out the bags and I save these little papers for things. and But sometimes I don't because I usually have lots and lots <laughs> there we go so um there now what i will do is i usually will pour in maybe about halfway up into the pan and fill it with water well not fill halfway up is not filling you know what i mean i pour it in there we go i might not even use the rest of this today and i'll just leave it on the counter uh, my, oftentimes my husband will put it in the fridge when he tidies up and you know what either or it doesn't matter 
um, I have found that I can just, I can make another batch tomorrow, um, the next day. It doesn't have to be hot to make tea dyed paper. So uh, now I take a, t a piece of paper and I start at the top and I run my fingers around the edge and pat down all the edges. So see how that leaves that bubble? I'll use my hand and I just run the tea over that and I just leave it. And then I lay down another piece of paper. I start there, I plop it down around the edges so that it's all been sealed down and then I run the tea over the top. And I just keep doing this to go through my 20 sheets of paper. Yeah, you can hear that floor creaking, can't you? <laughs> so there, it's all down. I just wet that and I do that for a reason. One time I thought, oh, I'll be clever. I'm not going to wet that and see what happens. And you know what? It doesn't look nice, or at least I don't think it looks nice. So here you can see there is a great big bulge, but you can also see bubbles forming. Do you see those right there? And it gets better. So it just keep a going. This pan, this tiny little pan holds 20 sheets nicely. So it, 20 just seemed to work out to be my magic tea dyeing um, number. And I just uh, keep doing this. But this is where, <laughs> roundabout story, where I um, first used my spoons because I didn't want to touch the paper. So this is what I was doing. <laughs> I was doing this that day <laughs> and just running that around and then I was literally spooning it and splashing it on <laughs> and painting it with the spoon so that I didn't have to touch the paper because <laughs> my hands were in such bad shape and that's how though that accidentally I discovered how to um, put bubbles so this is still it's sort of like a little Think about it now. We've got several layers of paper with air in between them. And just, just lightly wet it. Keep it going. Keep it going. I'm probably going to turn off, or I'm going to pause and finish this stack. And then I'll tell you what we do next. Right. So hold on. Now I have to dry my hands because I'm covered in tea. All right. So hold on. Okay. So last sheet here. Let's put it in around the edges so that it sticks down because your paper will want to start curling depending on the, uh, the direction of the fibers. Um, so there we go. And then this is what I find makes all the little different bubbles in different places and makes every sheet different. I simply take my hand and I'll push it down and I'll push it down, maybe like that, and then walk away. Just leave it. And I know you can sort of see my hands there. That dissipates and you just end up, the bubbles will just start moving themselves around. And... I just leave that now and I'll leave it like this. Hold on. <clears throat> I'll leave my pan like this for a few hours, you know, depending on how dark you want it. So sometimes like say this for me, this would probably a bit be about nine in the morning now. Um, I'll go upstairs, work in my studio or do whatever it is I'm doing that day. And um, I'll walk away for two or three hours. I might not come back to this pan until I'm, I come downstairs to have a bite of lunch. So um, I think I'm going to have to do a part A and a part B so that you can see what I do next with this because I know my phone won't, won't handle being put on pause um, for three hours. 
<laughs> and like I said, I, I don't know how to join them together. And you know what? I, I know some people are going to say, oh, it's so easy. You can do this, do that, download this app, and then you join them. No, you know what? It's just so much easier. I'm just going to, you're going to get two videos today, part A, part B. So, woohoo! You'll see me again later. All right, um, watch for the next one. It'll probably be up right now. So, uh, yeah, we'll talk in a few minutes, and uh, you can see what I do next. Bye!